Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This patient is for implantation of a premium IOL Technis multifocal intraocular lens. The patient is under topical anesthesia and the cataract is an intermittent mature cataract. Let us observe this surgery. This is the main incision at mid limbus with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. And now a side port. A side port is made three clock hours away from the main incision so that astigmatism induced by the main wound is neutralized to some extent by this side port. Width of this side port is about 1.8 millimeter. Now an air bubble is injected. Underneath this air bubble, tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. The dye is applied in such a way that there is a nice staining of the anterior capsule. Now this is phenocaine. patient is under topical anesthesia and the patient is finding it difficult to cooperate. The dye is washed out and now the antechamber is filled up with visco. This is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now capsulorexis. I'm using a uterita forceps. Make a C-flap, hold the C-flap and do a small rexis first. This is Mohanta's minirexis. When you do a minirexis using only hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and now some amount of cortex is removed some superficial lens matter is removed and the intralenticular pressure is reduced in this way I have made the side board with about 1.8 millimeters so that this 23 goes Simcoe can easily go through it. And the side board is 3 clockers away from the main incision so that the astigmatism induced by the main incision is neutralized to some extent by this side board. In this case, the difference in K reading is about 0 0.6. So, I don't want to induce more astigmatism in this case. So, now after reducing the intralenticular pressure, visco that is 2% ASPMC is injected again a vana scissor is taken a small cut is given at the margin of the small rexus and now a very carefully a 5 millimeter rexus is done I want the optic of the intraocular lens be overlapped by the anterior capsular rim so the size of the rexis is about 5 millimeter and this has been a very satisfactory rexis this control has been achieved because of the reduction of intralenticular pressure and now 
the tip of the fecal needle goes in some superficial cortical lens matter is removed the nucleus is rotated and then the handpiece is turned to make the pebble up and now this is direct chop direct submarine chop this cataract is not hard so it was easy to emulsify the nuclear pieces And now there is a nuclear piece at the side port. We must remove that first. The piece is dislodged from the side port. And now a 23 gauze Simco is used to guide this, to escort this nuclear piece to come out of the interior chamber. Here it goes. The Simcoe applies little vacuum, places it at the main wound and depresses the posterior leaf and it comes out. Now in this case I am using this Simcoe itself for removal of the cortical lens matter. I have made the side board about 1.8 millimeters so that the astigmatism induced by the main wound can be neutralized to some extent and this instrument can easily go into the anterior chamber. And there is only one side board. If you make two side boards of 1.2 millimeter it becomes two side boards together becomes 2.4 millimeter but one large side board is 1.8 millimeter S it is done through the side board you can go easily and remove the sub incisional cortex and now this is 2% ASPMC again fills up the capsular bag and the anterior chamber and this is Technis multifocal intraocular lens. And this is wound assisted implantation. The main wound has not been enlarged. Same 2.8 millimeter wound and the lens goes into the capsular bag. Intercapsular margin is checked. And I find that the optic is overlapped by the anticapsular rim all around. And now Visco is cleaned very nicely. First, irrigation by the Simco. I call it double irrigation because there is irrigation and through the aspirating port I flush out some amount of PSS. The capsular bag and the chamber is irrigated then I take the 
irrigation aspiration cannula and now once there is only one side port and if we want to use the main wound for irrigation and if we want less amount of leakage during aspiration the idea is just lift the anterior leaf of the main wound little bit and the leakage will be minimal you can increase the bottle height to minimize anterior chamber fluctuations the anterior chamber is nicely maintained and deep both the probes are at iris plane far away from corneal endothelium and it is done so very nice cleaning of visco is done and this is moxie and then the side port is nicely closed by hydrating corneal stroma the main wound usually doesn't require hydration but in this case I didn't take any chance hydrated a little bit the sides of the main wound and this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber any visco sticking to the corneal endothelium is removed at this time Again I go behind the lens so this has been a very satisfactory surgery the patient cooperated well after initial difficulty and the case is done integrity of all the wounds are checked and the case is concluded Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with a lot of respect, empathy, care, compassion and great surgical competence.